Tip is up, and it is controlled by McMurray College. They've kind of got some throwback jerseys, that's what I'd call them. Light gray with some red trimming, kind of got a converse look to them. Williams dribbles into the corner. He's double teamed. Good pressure there. Man-to-man -man defense coming in here. Over to Guthrie. Guthrie dribbles top of the key. Goes right wing to Williams. First possession of the game here. Shot clock's down to 10. Looking for a good shot to start things out for McMurray. Sutton has it in the corner. Back up top to Williams. Five on the shot clock. has got to make a move. Williams, deep three. Off the rim. No good. Long rebound goes to Sutton. Whitlock has it top of the key. Passes right wing. Quickly into the corner. Keltner three off the rim. No good. Long rebound. Popped around. Keltner comes up with it. Two offensive rebounds to start the game for Mack. One thing they stressed earlier in the game, and I talked about this with Coach Creel, they're crashing the offensive boards this season. They're the top offensive rebounding team in the conference. Guthrie calling out a screen up top. He picks up his dribble. Round the horn they go. Keltner has it right wing. Over to Sutton. Williams fakes the drive. Ten seconds on the shot clock. A minute into the first half here. Spinning in the lane. Sutton off the glass. No good. Tipped up. Another offensive rebound. Guthrie comes up with it. He drives the lane. Kicks it right wing. Williams. Three. In and out. No good. Good look there. Four offensive rebounds in that first possession. Give the rebound there for Spalding's Turner. Long first possession for Matt. They don't come away with any points. Here we go down low for Spalding. They get it to Moore. Spins in the lane. Passes back up top to Abrams. He doesn't like what he sees. He'll kick it right wing. They go over to Gabriel. He is fouled. That's on the ground. Ball will be taken out of bounds. Team's first foul for Mack. That foul will be tagged on Guthrie. Ball is inbounded and Guthrie pokes it out of bounds. McMurray with some lockdown defense to start this game out, Sean. Yeah, that's what you like to see. Coming out with a lot of intensity today. I know they're really excited to be playing their first home game in front of their great student section. So here we go. New shot clock coming in. Up top is the point guard for Spalding. That's Gabriel. Gabriel dribbles left wing. Passes right wing as they get it over to Turner. Turner spins. Goes right wing into the free throw line. Lost it. Loose on the ground. He gets the loose ball. Passes back left wing. Power dribble into the post. Moore throws up a wild shot. That's no good. Williams comes up with the board. Max looking to run. Williams will slow it down. Thought about the three. Down low. Whitlock. One on one. Off the glass. You got it. Max strikes first. They're up two to nothing here in the first half. Full court pressure defense coming out. And it'll be a foul off the ball. They'll call that on Keltner. Ball is inbounded. Once again, full court pressure coming in from Mack on Spalding. We'll see how Spalding does dribbling the basketball today because Mack's trying to force some turnovers. They're undersized. Top of the key with Moore. He doesn't want to dribble it. He'll pass it off. Left wing, they go to Gabriel. Gabriel, good look down low to Moore. Can't get the layup to go. Big rebound for Whitlock. Guthrie wants to push it. Nice pass down low. It's tipped loose. Sutton has to go after it. He tracks it down. Nice drive baseline up. A lot of contact. They'll say it was all ball. Give the block there to Abrams. Max student section doesn't like the call. Fast break. Here we go. Gabriel off the glass. He can't get it to go. Good pressure defense there from Guthrie. One on three break. He'll pull it back into the corner. Just two to nothing is the score. Three-pointer taken from Guthrie. That's no good. Give the rebound for Abrams of Spalding. Back right, and I'm, forth action for both these teams so far, Sean. I really want to see the matchup between Abrams and Whitlock as Whitlock's being worked down low right now. And we just saw that one. Abrams walk. Tried to pivot there on a spin move. Lost his footing. First turnover of the game for Spalding. I know that's one thing that Coach Creel has really worked on the last few years is the defense. Previous years, they were in a zone-style type of defense. The last couple years going more to our man-to-man uh, -man defense. And it really has paid off for them the last two years. Donnie Lewis, the six foot one freshman, checks in for Spalding on the other side for Mack. It's Alex Bolt, the 6'2 freshman. He averages three points a game. So a couple quick subs coming in here with 16 and a half left in the first half. We've got a foul. Abrams pushed from behind on Whitlock. That'll be his first foul. Team's second foul. That's a matchup you're really looking at today, Sean. Two big boys down low. And you're hoping that they let him play just a little bit more to see those two go at it down on the post. Williams finds a seam, drives a lane, can't get the layup to go as it rattled in and out. Max had plenty of good looks today as the rebound went for Abrams. Pull-up jumper there is good from going. Got to keep a hand in his face. He averages 15 points a game. Tied up at 2-2. Two to two. A lot of 
high action here early in the game. Luke Murray gets the ball down low to Bott. Bott doesn't like what he sees. He passes it off. Now they go back on the right wing to Keltner. Williams gets it up top. He'll set up the offense. 12 on the shot clock as Williams dribbles into the corner. Some light man-to-man -man defense coming in from Spalding. They're sagging off a lot. I'm surprised because McMurray loves to shoot the three. Spot up jumper. Williams can't get it to go off the side of the rim. Another rebound for Abrams. They've got to figure out something on him because he's getting every rebound in sight. You know, the Highlanders started off strong with a few offensive rebounds to begin the possession. After that, that offensive rebound has really died down. Into the corner they go, going. Tough three, hand in his face, no good. Well contested there from Williams as he comes up with a long rebound. All tied up, two to two. Williams pressured up top by going. He'll pass it off to Sutton. Sutton spins at the free throw line. Nice seal down low from Whitlock as he gets the bucket to go off a great entry pass from Sutton. Four to two, Max got the lead. Yeah, you talked about that entry pass. That was great as well, but another great move down there by Whitlock, and there's a five-second violation called against the Golden Eagles of Spalding, so it's a turnover, and Mack will get the ball right back. Full-court pressure defense once again. Coach Krill talked about that, trying to force turnovers. Spalding will have another substitution coming into the game. Coming in will be Victor Cosby, the six-foot-two junior. Keltner wants to pass it in, and we've got a foul. Cosby, a second hasn't even gone off the clock, and uh, he's already committed a foul. Yeah, that's something you don't want to see if you're the Spalding head coach. Clock didn't even start yet, getting tied up defensively. Brent Long checking into the game for the first time for McMurray. Also coming in for the first time will be Brock Snarsky. Snarsky's a freshman, as is Long. So here we go. Snarsky has it left wing. He spins, guarded by Cosby up top. 15 minutes left in the first half, and we've got to travel. Sutton walks a little bit too early before he put that dribble down. A lot of subs coming in here in waves as McMurray will bring in Cash Hubble for the first time. Hubble is a six foot three junior, averaging just over three points a game. Not a lot of scoring, a lot of offense we've seen, just not a lot of buckets have gone down. Going has it left wing. Also coming into the game for McMurray will be Lance Bulig, six foot one freshman. Top of the key, Cosby fakes the three. Now we'll pass it over to Lewis, left wing. Lewis will get a screen up top. Can't seem to go anywhere. Passes to Cosby back in the corner. Back up top to Lewis. Tight defense up top as Lewis drives the lane. Might have got away with a walk as he took an extra step, but throws up an air ball, no good. Hubble with the rebound. Mack wants to push. But drives the lane. A lot of contact, and he draws the foul. Well, he had that ball at the three-point line, took two dribbles, and was already in the post. And Cosby had no choice but to foul him. Cosby picked up two fouls in a matter of about uh, 30 seconds. Yeah, good job by Cash right there, taking the ball to the rack, and Bott's going to be at the line for two. Bott's first free throw attempt is up. And it's no good. McMurray still with the lead, 4-2. to two. Thank you for listening to us here on 107.1 The Eagle. Jacksonville High School plays later on tonight, so keep it locked right here on The Eagle. Second free throw is good from Bott. That makes the score 5-2. to two. Once again, McMurray bringing out that full-court pressure defense. Left wing they go with Lewis. He's taking over as the ball handler here. Passes the going right wing. Going, looks down low in the post. Nothing there. Around the horn we go. Cosby gets it left wing. He picks up his dribble. In the corner they go. Entry pass down low. Ball is knocked loose. They try to get the ball down low there to Leon, and we've got a foul. As it looks like Long will be charged with the foul. And they'll say who's actually shooting on the play. So Leon will go to the line for two shots. So Spalding catches the break. They can't hit the first of two free throws. Another substitution coming in for McRoy. They're just letting everybody play today. Tyshawn Lewis, Willis comes in. Willis is a six foot three freshman at 155 pounds. We've just about seen every single player on that McMurray bench come in here early in the first half. Second free throw rattles around. It is good. First point of the game for Leon. Spalding will bring out some full court pressure of their own. And here we go. Mack tries to break it. Bulick has it. He's pressured. Got to get rid of it. He'll pass it off. Hubble gets it on the right wing. They do cross across half court just in time. Ball's tipped out of bounds. I believe it went off Spalding last. And that's a right call as it'll stay McMurray basketball. So no starters on the court for McMurray now. They've brought in an entire new lineup now off the bench. 
Mack looks to pass in. They go to Snarski. Snarski will dribble up top. He'll set up the offense. Bulig left wing. Looks in the corner. Get it over to Willis. Willis pops the three. That's no good. Tipped around. Spalding comes up the long rebound. That's going with it. Just over 13 minutes left in the first half. Spalding on the attack. They trail by two. Five to three here in the first half. Good ball movement up top as Lewis has it. He drives to the free throw line. Looks down low. Nowhere to go as Leon puts up a baby hook and he gets it to go. He's got three in the game. So a three-point run here for Spalding as they tie things up. Long with a screen up top, frees up Bulick. He'll pop a three for the lead. No good, hits nothing but backboard. The rebound for Spalding goes over to Lewis. Lewis lobs it right wing, going wide open. He'll take that three. Drano, that was way downtown as Spalding has taken the lead, which is, I believe, the first of the game for them. That is the first lead of them for the game. Snarski has it right wing. He'll pass it back up top. Willis behind the back, gets a screen from Long. A little high... High low pick and roll game. Max got going out there right now. A couple subs about to come in. A couple starters will be in the game here on the next dead ball. Snarski right wing. Dribbles back top of the key. McMurray killing some time here. Ten seconds left on the shot clock. Willis fakes the three. They go down low. That'll be a foul. Not a smart one from Leon. They enter the pass down low to Long. And Snarski was just draped all over the back of Long. That'll be the fourth team foul. Ryan, you talk about Coach Creel using a lot of substitutions. With them playing a high-style, high-pressure type of uh, offense and defense, you're going to have to sub in a lot of guys in and out, keep guys fresh, especially against a good Spalding team that likes to run just as much as the Highlanders do. Whitlock and Guthrie both check back into the game for McMurray. Good look down low, one-on-one. -on -one. Whitlock, spin, fakes the shot, now goes up. Heavily contested, but he still gets it to go. He's got some solid post moves, Sean. Great post moves down underneath. Now six points for Whitlock. Eight to seven. Spalding with a one-point lead. Twelve minutes left in the first half. Ryan Turk and Sean Kelly here to bring you the action from Bill Wall Gymnasium. Driving is going left wing. He'll pop another three. He wants it. He got it. You've got to put a hand in his face. He loves the three ball, Sean. Yes, he does. That's a second three-pointer of the game. Now eight points for going. And he's not shy about shooting it out. 11-7, Spalding back with the lead. Cash shovel, three-pointer, top of the key. Can't get it to go. Lewis gets the board. They've got numbers, three on two. Lewis, right down Broadway. Good look, left wing. Layup is up and no good. On the shot there was Moore. Couldn't get it to go. They'll say two shots coming up. Smart foul there as Moore would have had a wide open layup. Not an over-aggressive play right there by Hubble, but he knew he couldn't give Moore a wide open opportunity for an easy two points right there with the way that Spalding has been playing the last couple times down the floor. The lefty Moore drains the first free throw. Sutton comes back in the game, as does Keltner. So you've got the starting lineup for Mack out there outside of Willis. He's still in the game. Second free throw on the way, and it's good. 13-7, biggest lead of the game for Spalding. Still plenty of time left in this game. Bad pass from Guthrie. Stolen away by Lewis. Lewis gets into the paint. Cosby up and under. Blocked from behind. Good defense from Sutton. Cosby does come up with a loose ball. He'll enter the ball down low to Moore. Moore, head fake. Puts it up on the second attempt. That's no good. Well contested down low on the post as Keltner comes up with the rebound. He'll slow thing down. Hands the ball off to Whitlock. Asks for it right back. Sutton gets it at the free throw line. Looks to pass it left wing. Now goes down low. Whitlock, he's too big in the post. He misses the layup. That was the, the first time we saw Whitlock underneath. Not really get a good possession on Abrams down there. Excuse me, on more that time. Timeout taken by Spalding. It's a 30-second break. We'll take one as well. 10.40 left in the first half. It's a 13-7 lead for Spalding. Um. Welcome back to the broadcast. Sean Kelly, Ryan Turk alongside as we are bringing you the game between the Highlanders and the Spalding Golden Eagles. Right now the Highlanders down 13-7, 10-40 remaining in the first half, and it's been a back-and-forth game really defensively, offensively, both sides playing well, Ryan. The first possession was huge for Mack. They got four offensive rebounds in the first possession, couldn't put anything down, but you like the aggressiveness of Mack. The key for Spalding so far is Going's been able to hit his jump shot. Quick jumper up and good as getting the jumper there was Gabriel on a nice curl he added at the free throw line. And Spalding really seems to have slowed this game down, and that's their style here coming in. They lead 15-7. to Mack trying to get that three ball to go. Have not been that successful. Guthrie drives the lane. He's blocked by Gabriel. 
We've seen a lot of well-contested shots from both teams. Gabriel thought about pulling up from the three-point line. Instead, drives to the free-throw line. Passes off to Lewis, and he'll pull it back. Lewis has come in here off the bench and really has taken over as the point guard here for Spalding. Gabriel has it right wing. He tries to pass it off, but before, took an extra step, and he walked. Good defense that time from Colin Keltner, and that man-to-man -man defense had one arm on him. Five-second count was going. It was getting down, and I think flustered him a little bit and went to the traveling violation and the turnover. The Highlanders getting the ball back. You know, at five foot nine, a lot of people say Keltner's a little undersized, but he is very quick and a very good defender. Can't count him out. Great distributor as well. Under 10 minutes left in the first half, Keltner, a contested three. I think it was partially blocked, and it was. Whitlock comes up with the rebound. He puts it down. They've got to get the ball to him early and often today. That should be the key. He has eight points right now, and when he's able to get some time to work down under, underneath, he does a great job. Gabriel with a runner. The floater is good. Got a nice screen from Abrams to free up an open jumper. And Max trying to run that high-tempo offense, but it hasn't been too successful in generating points. Good look down low. Williams finds Whitlock, and that's a bucket. That time, Clayton was just wide open. Timeout taken by McMurray. Whitlock's on fire. He's been the high scorer for both teams. 8.59 left in the first half. It's a 17 to 11 lead for Spalding over Mack. Back in 30 seconds. The Highlanders trying to inch right back into this ball game. It's 11 to 17 right on the back of Clayton Whitlock. A game high right now of 10 points. The next closest is Brandon going. He has eight for Spalding. And you know, I think Whitlock's only missed one shot today. He's been yeah. very good in the post. What's especially good, what he's done, he's been able to seal his defender each time to allow himself to get a good shot. A couple good entry passes down low. He's had a solid game. We'll see if the rest of the Highlanders can pick up the tempo along with Whitlock. On the attack is going. He has it in the corner. Might have got away with a carrying call. He'll keep the possession. 15 seconds left on the shot clock. Going. Pump faked on the three. He'll pass off to Lewis left wing. Screen up top from Moore. Tries to curl around it. Good defense from Guthrie. Forces a tough shot. Weak side board comes in from Leon and he puts it in. You love the defense there, Sean, but you got to box out, crash the rebounds. That's exactly what Spalding did. They come away with an easy bucket. They lead 19 to 11. Yeah, you can't give Spalding second chance opportunities, Ryan. Keltner has it left wing, back up top to Sutton. Starters out on the court now for Mack. Offensive foul, I think they're going to get Whitlock on that. He moved when he tried to set a screen up top, and that's exactly what they'll get on the call. Yeah, that was the good call by the official. Clayton even knew it right away. As soon as that whistle was blown, he started shaking his head as, yep, that was me. Going has to come after the ball. Once again, full court pressure defense coming in from Mack, trying to force some turnovers, and a whistle. Shot clock problems right there. The there shot clock didn't start on time. You know, I've noticed they've had some problems. There's been a couple times where the shot clock will say 25 and trickle down and it'll go back up to 30. So not sure if we have some problems up there with the shot clock or not, but hopefully that gets addressed. They have reset the shot clock, and now we're good to go. Lewis passes left wing to going. He's been deadly from beyond the arc today, and we've got a whistle. They're calling it on Guthrie. And that's two off-the-ball fouls in a row there for Mac. And you know what? That has been consistent so far today, Ryan. They've been calling those off the ball fouls. Alex Bott checks in for Guthrie as he picked up his second foul. Still 19 to 11, the lead for Spalding. Just over seven and a half minutes left in the first half. Gabriel, drive, spin, in the paint, no good. Popped up in the air, Whitlock comes up with a rebound. He's quick. That's the first time I've seen him miss that short range jumper today. Bott has it right wing. Still in that man-to-man -man defense from Spalding. Takes one dribble, dangerous pass. Keltner has to go after it. He tracks it down. Keltner's open on the left wing. Thought about the three. Instead, he'll pass it over right wing to Sutton. Around the horn we go. Williams has it in the corner. He looks back up top. Sutton really slowing down this half-court office now. Puts his head down. Pulls up from the free throw line. Clanks off the front of the rim. Got his own rebound. Puts up the shot. It's a foul on the shot. Blocking foul coming in from Moore as he tried to take the charge. Two free throws coming up for Sutton and I think this is a good thing for Mac because as good as their offense has looked they haven't been able to get shots to go down and one thing you like to do you're struggling with your jump shot go to the free throw line correct that shot get some easy ones to go down and get some momentum going forward yeah you just have to shoot your way out of things Ryan and getting a chance to go to the free throw line here for Hunter Sutton this is going to be the first time of the game that he goes to the free throw line and he's one of those guys that's a good mid-range shooter that's going to be able to 
pull it up from the elbow and knock him down. He'll take two free throws from the line. First one's up. Can't get it to go in and out. Substitution coming in for Spalding. We've got a new man. It's Chad Sellers, six foot five, two hundred pounds, a sophomore. Averages two and a half points a game. Talked with Coach Creel once again the other day. He was talking about new leaders needing to step up for McMurray College. And Sutton's one of those leaders coming in this year after there was a plethora of star players in the starting lineup that graduated. Second free throw is good. 19 to 12, still the lead for Spalding. They've led for quite some time now, Sean. Yeah, they've led now for the last few times down the floor. Have gone off on a nice little run here. We get a jumper. That one's no good. Gabriel took the three. It clanked off the rim, hit the wiring just on top of the hoop. It's automatic out of bounds there. Good defense there from Mack. And really nothing seemed to click for Spalding's offense. They just got some random buckets to go down. Going set a couple three-pointers. Other than that, they haven't had too hot of a first half either. Driving the lane, Sutton, nice crossover, gets into the paint and gets the bucket to go. He attacks the new man in the game, Sellers. That's exactly what you want to do. Sutton's fresh. Sellers is coming in cold off the bench. Mack trims the lead for Spalding to five. They trail 19 to 14. It'll be a bump foul there from Bott as he got a lot of the body there. Free throws coming up as that's the seventh team foul, so a one and one coming up from Lewis. Cash Hubble will come into the game for Sutton. That was the first foul of the game for Bott. Ryan, the last time the Highlanders had a lead, Mack had a lead, it was 5-3. to three. So that was early on, and then it went 5-5. Five, five. Spalding tied it up, and then it's pretty much been Spalding on the positive end as the score is 19-14 right now, Spalding with the lead. Snarsky also checks in for McMurray. So a 1-1 one one on the line for Lewis. First one's up, drains it. He'll have one more from the line. You know, as much as McMurray's offense has struggled here in this first half, they played pretty solid defense today, and they've put them in a position where even if you don't have a great first half, you can come out, get hot early in the second half, and make a ball game out of it real quick. This one is by no means over. A lot of game to play. Second free throw is no good for Lewis. We'll see if Mack can come up with something of a hot streak here to end this first half. Bad pass from Keltner. It's tipped loose. Lewis comes up with a steal. Passes it deep to going. Spins in the paint. How to get it to go is good. It was a wild pass from Lewis. Going had to track it down. Spun in the post. Put it off the glass and put it home. 22-14 is the lead for Spalding. Jump shot from 15 in the quarter from Williams. That's an air ball. No good. Lewis gets the rebound. He's been aggressive here since he entered the game. And we've got a carry. Tried to pass it off left wing. Lost the handle on it just a little bit, and it was enough for a carrying call. Hey, talk about being aggressive. Just a little bit too aggressive right there. It'll be Bulick as well as Willis checking into the game for McMurray. They'll probably be in here for the next five minutes trying to give the starters a rest to end this first half. Willis has it up top. He'll pass it off left wing. They go to Snarsky. Snarsky back up top to Willis. He gets a screen from Hubble. He looks wide open. They're just going to kill a little clock. Gets the ball down to Whitlock. That's the matchup they want. Power move in the post. Rattling around the rim and gets it to go. Whitlock now with 12 on the game. You see when they're able to use some of the shot clock, give Whitlock time to post up down underneath. Positive things happen for Mack, Ryan. 22 to 16, Spalding with the lead. I think if you're Spalding, you got to consider doubling him down low. They've been going one on one this whole game, and it hasn't worked out. He's been the only offensive weapon for Mack. Lewis drives left wing. He'll kick it in the corner. Wide open down low is Moore. Ball's tipped around. Rebound goes over to James. He can't get the layup to go. It's loose, and ball goes out to Bulig of Mack. Mack wants to push. Open in the corner. That's Snarsky. Thought about the jumper. Instead passes to Willis on a lob pass on the left wing. Back up top. They'll slow the ball down. Down low. Good seal. Whitlock one-on-one. -on -one. Poked loose from behind by going. He gets the ball back, and Whitlock fades away and gets the baby hook to go. That was a nice, strong move right there by Clayton because there was a lot, lot of contact down on that block, Ryan. Yeah, they kind of let that one go. I thought there was going to be a foul from going on the play before that. It's a four-point lead for Spalding. Good run here from Mack. We'll see if they can keep it going with four minutes left in the first half. Lobbed up top to going. He bobbled it, got it back. Screen from Moore. Dribbles right wing. Tough looking three and hits it with a man in his face. That's his third three-pointer of the night, Sean. Yeah, now a total of 13 points for him. 
Mack will slow it down. 25 to 18 is the lead for Spalding. Every time it seems like Mack gets some momentum going, Spalding answers back. Reach and foul there for going as trying to drive there was Bulig. And he draws the foul. Long will check into the game. Looks like for Whitlock. So you got a completely new wave in here for McMurray. All bench players. Like you said earlier, they got to bring in some new players because with this high pressure, high speed offense, you've got to keep fresh bodies in at all times or you're going to seem sluggish out there. And you know what's really weird right now? Both small lineups out there on the floor. The only really big person out there is James and uh, Abrams for Spalding. Yeah, and he just checked into the game. Bulick has it left wing, goes behind the back, still man-to-man -man defense from Spalding. He wants to drive, gets a screen from Long. Left wing they go. Down on the post. Long posting up. It'll be a push from behind from Abrams. He's had all kinds of problems down low defending these big guys for Mac. Yeah, he does. Just gets a little bit too handsy on him. And that's a lot of things is Brent Long's going to go to the line for the one and one. But that's the thing. The refs aren't really letting the guys play too much. You saw the last possession. They let Clayton play a little bit. But down underneath, we haven't really seen that too much. Long's first free throw is up. Got it to go. That was the seventh team foul, second of the game for Abrams. These next couple minutes are big for Mac. I think they need to come out, be a little more aggressive, try to get that jump shot to go down, really work it down low in the post, try to tie this game up going into halftime. Second free throws up, rattles around, Long gets the roll. He's got his first two points of the game. Gabriel has to go after it. He gets it. Full court pressure still coming in from Mac. Driving the lane is Turner. He gets it to go. He kind of went coast to coast there, picked it up at the free throw line and went all the way. Driving on the other side is Bulick. He puts up a shot. He's fouled from behind. They might tag that one on Abrams. No, they will not get it on Abrams. They'll call it on Cosby. I believe that's his third foul. Yeah, that's his third foul, Ryan. That's a, that's a big foul right there by Cosby. And you look at the minutes so far this year. Cosby's been their sixth man, averaging the most minutes off the bench. Bueller will have two free throws on the line. Gets the first to go. Lewis gets a quick break on the bench for Spalding. He'll come right back in for Cosby. And Cosby hasn't seen too many minutes. He picked up two quick fouls early in the first half. Had to take a seat. Just came back into the game and picked up another foul. Second free throw is up, and it's good for Bulig. 27-22. Good defense from Bulig as he almost poked it loose. Spalding still with the lead. Three minutes left in the first half. Ryan Turk, Sean Kelly here to bring you the action from Bill Wall Gymnasium. Gabriel has it right wing. He'll get a screen. Splits the double team. Throws it down low. Abrams bobbled it, got it back, and put it in off the glass. Bad pass there as Lewis steals the ball. Heads up play there from Lewis to jump the route. Going. Head fake on the three. Tries to drive. Good defense from Max Guards as they're really focusing on not letting him take a three. Gabriel has it left wing. He's been aggressive on the drives here late in the half. Spins in the post. Lost his footing. Goes over to Lewis in the corner. Lewis wants to drive. Gets to the free throw line. While a foul on Cash Hubble there as he tried to reach in. Poke a steal loose. That's Hubble's second foul. Free throw should be coming up here for Spalding. As Sutton comes back in the game for Hubble. That's Hubble's second foul. A couple yeah. players in foul trouble here early on for both teams. So you're seeing a lot of subs coming in here late. Guthrie has two and Hubble has two for Mack. And Cosby has three for Spalding. And Abrams has two for Spalding as well. Lewis's first free throw is good. He'll have one more from the line. Reminder, Sean Kelly will have your halftime stats coming up uh, during the halftime show. We'll also take a look at the Green Automotive Scoreboard update. Plenty of games going on in college football right now. Second free throw is down and good. That extends the lead, 31-22. to Bulig wants to go coast to coast, up at the layup, draws the foul, and he'll go to the free throw line. They should get Abrams on that one for sure. And it is. He picks up his third foul, so he'll most likely be taking a seat on the bench past couple minutes, this game is just drawn to a crawl as we've seen a lot of free throws for both sides. Yeah, the tempo of this game is really slowing down with a lot of fouls the last few times down the floor. Bulick drains the first free throw. Moore will check back in the game for Abrams. Three points for Bulick now. All from the free throw line. Eight team fouls for Mack. Nine team fouls for Spalding. Second free throw is up. And it's good. He's perfect from the line. Four for four. 31 to 24. Spalding still with the lead. 
Lewis will pass out of the double team. He'll get it over to Turner. Turner kicks in the corner. Nice head fake from Gabriel. Frees up a wide open three, and he buries it. Long went all out, tried for the block, but a nice pump fake as they go fast break. Here we go. Long draws the foul on a layup. Spalding's having a tough time getting back on defense on this fast break push from Mack. Yeah, they're having a little trouble getting back in transition, and that's where Mack has got to turn these into plus points. I know there's been some fouls down underneath, but you got to go up strong and be able to finish two shots for long. That'll be charged on Moore, his second of the game. First free throw is good from Long. Leon will check back in for Moore. Keltner and Williams, a couple starters coming back here for Mack. They enter the game, and I like this move from Coach Creel, trying to get a little boost here. Some quick guards coming in here, trying to push a tempo here late to try to make a run and tie this game up at the end of the half. Long second free throw is good. Mack has done a good job on the free throw line this game. Pass to Lewis in the corner, 34 to 26. Spalding still with the lead. Moore will pass it right wing. Jump shot from going, and he buries it from about 10 feet out. So Spalding answers right back with a jump shot, 36 to 26. They've got a 10-point lead. Minute and a half left here in the first half. Sutton has nowhere to go. He's got to get rid of it. He's triple team. We'll get it over to Keltner. Keltner, open, top of the key, three-pointer. Ooh, off the back of the rim, no good. Got a great look as Lewis came up with a rebound, but he threw it away. Tried to hit going on an outlet into the corner. Bad pass there from Spalding. They've had a couple turnovers this game. Yeah, a couple sitting at four right now in the first half, Ryan. Whitlock checks back into the game, so we see a handful of starters now. Four of the five in the game for Mack. Trying to get some buckets here to end this first half. Ten-point lead for Spalding. Williams with the left wing. He'll get a screen up top from Sutton. Drives to the free throw line. Pulls up. Tough look. Off the rim. No good. Tipped around. Touched by Sutton but rebounded by Gabriel. Spalding wants to push. Leon thought about a jumper from five. It's blocked away on his second attempt. Good defense there from Whitlock. Williams wants to drive, slows it down, gets it to Willis. Nice up and under in the post, and he draws a foul. He'll take two from the line. Once again, Spalding. I think one thing they really need to work on going into halftime here and going to the second half, containing this fast, court, fast break offense for Mack. Every time they come up with a defensive rebound, they're looking to push the tempo in these past couple minutes. Spalding really looking sluggish getting back. First free throw from Willis is good. He'll have one more from the line. 56 seconds left here in the first half. Max been trailing for quite some time now. Second free throw is good. Eight point lead for Spalding. Mack has only missed two free throws so far in this first half run. It's exactly what you want if you coach Creel. Going crosses half court, he'll hand off to Gabriel with 45 seconds left on the clock. Has it up top, might see a one-on-one -on -one game here going, everybody clears out. Going has it right wing, pulls a dribble back, 15 on the shot clock. Ball's tipped on the pass up top from Turner. Lewis, thinking about driving, eight seconds on the clock, gets in the paint, spins, up and under, good. Big shot there from Lewis as he gets it to go. Just backed his man in, spun in the post, and got it to go. We've got a whistle with 18 seconds left. Let's we'll see what the call is the official here. It's off the ball for sure. And that's one thing that has been done a lot. Shot clock has now been turned off. But those calls away from the ball, maybe that's a point of emphasis in college basketball this year, Ryan. That's an inadvertent whistle they'll call there. 17 seconds left, should be the final possession for Mack. They go down low, Whitlock spins in the post, draws the double team, tries to lay it up, no good on that one, got his rebound, missed it, got his rebound again, puts it up and he's fouled, he'll take two from the line, but he's frustrated on that one. He had two opportunities to put in two points and he failed to get it. Yeah, you have to be able to capitalize right there if you're Clayton Whitlock. Now you get an opportunity to make up those two points that you should have got right off the bat. So two free throws coming up. Whitlock gets the first to go. He'll take one more. Mack now trails by single digits. 38 to 29, the lead for Spalding. Second free throw's up. Second free throw is good. Full court pressure coming out here. 
They'll get it to Lewis. Should be the last possession of the first half. Four seconds he crosses half court. Lobs it up top. Ball's loose. It's stolen. Sutton has the ball. Layup up and it's good. No, wait. They'll say no good. He let the ball off his hands too late. Did not get the shot off in time. But McMurray ends the first half on a high note. They trail 30-38, to 38, but there's a lot about their offense you like going into this second half. Sean Kelly's got the full stats and a whole lot more coming up. We'll take a two-minute break, come back, and have more here from Bill Wall Gymnasium. Starters coming out on the court for McMurray College. Also starters coming out for Spalding College. And here we go. We start the second half. 38-30. The lead still with Spalding. And we started out with Gabriel on the right wing. He looks into the post. Nothing there. Going with it up top. Going's been deadly from beyond the arc today. He'll pass it off to Moore. Moore takes one dribble. Lost it. Got it back. Ball's loose again on the ground. He has to spin around. Go after it. He does get it. Going has it at the free throw line. Trying to drive. Leaner in the post. No good. Great box out there from Sutton. And an excellent defensive first possession for McMurray College. Yeah, great job right there defensively. Almost created a couple turnovers. Now they get their first offensive possession of the second half. Williams has it up top. The key of the offense, get the ball down low to Whitlock and let him do his work one-on-one. -on -one. Guthrie wants to drive to the free throw line. Step back. It's blocked away. Ball is loose. Williams fights after it. He gets the loose ball. Ten on the shot clock. He'll get the ball to the free throw line, pop a jumper, and drain it. Williams' first two points of the game. Yeah, they need him to be more aggressive. They need him to be a scorer, especially off the dribble drive. 32-38, to 38, McMurray trails by six points. A minute into the second half. Good crowd here for both sides, Spalding and McMurray College. It's Toys for Tots Kids Day. As a steal, it's Keltner. He's got no one in front of him. Layup is up and good. McMurray capitalizing off a turnover. They start this, this half out with four straight points. Yeah, you want to talk about, about the intensity that they're playing with that they came out with in the first in the second half, Ryan, and it's been all them so far. It'll be a pass up top from Turner. He'll go over to Moore. Not sure why Moore is handling the basketball that far away from the hoop as he almost threw it away. Gabriel has to go after it. 18 minutes left in the second half. Jump shot on the corner. That's good. Turner hits the jump shot. He's been quiet today. Only it's, four points for him. It's that jumper from about 15. So Spalding answers back after a steal from Keltner. Top of the key we go with Keltner. He gets it right wing to Whitlock. Right back over to Keltner. Doing a lot of pick and roll up top. Trying to post up down low is Whitlock. They're doing a good job denying him with Abrams. And Moore's helping out down low in this 2-3 defense. We've got a travel coming in from Sutton as he got the pass over there from Guthrie. Trying to move too quick into the post. You know, the Highlanders were trying to run a set right there. Get a look down to, to Whitlock because you saw him looking down there at Whitlock. Good defense from Spalding that time down the floor. Lob deep they go. It's Turner. He kicks it in the corner. Open three going. He's dangerous. He hits the three. Every time he's had an open three-pointer, he's buried it today. 18 points in his fourth three-pointer of the night. After starting out on a 4-0 run, McMurray has let up five straight points. We've got a whistle off the ball. It'll be on Abram. That's a big foul. I believe that's his fourth. Called off the ball there, trying to get around Whitlock. They'll bring in Lewis. Team's first foul in the second half. It is Abram's fourth. Abrams will go right to the bench. First person on the bench. Keltner to inbound under his own hoop. Lobs it in the corner. Guthrie fakes the three. Drives into the lane. Pro hop. He gets the bucket to go. That Dylan last Guthrie. dribble created just enough separation to open up a shot. Dylan Guthrie has been quiet tonight offensively. Only two points for him. But you know what? He's been working from away from the ball too as he just got whistled for a foul. Yeah, I tried to, try to reach in there. A little bump on that play. He'll be calling for the foul. That's the team's first foul of the second half. Checking into the game for McMurray College will be Alex Bod. He's kind of been serving as the sixth man of this team. He's been the first man off the bench in the first half as well as the second half. Third foul of the game for Guthrie. Deep three from going. Clanks off the back of the rim. No good. Keltner gets a long rebound. He'll spin away from traffic. Pass in the corner. Nice move from Bott. Goes baseline and he's pushed off as he almost took a tumble to the ground there. Foul will be on Lewis, trying to cut off that baseline. Excellent head fake there from Ba to free up a little bit of room. And he took advantage of that. First foul in the game on Lewis, second team foul for Spalding. 
Fouls just keep piling up for both teams. Williams with a three-point shot. That's no good. Law rebound goes over to Turner. Spalding's on the attack. Lewis has it right wing. I like the way Lewis has played today off the bench for Spalding. 16 and a half minutes left in the second half. It's a 43 to 36 lead for Spalding. McMurray College trying to make a comeback here. It's been at about a six, eight point range just about you know, since five minutes into the game. Down low they go to Moore. He's got it about 10 feet away from the hoop. Pass to Lewis. Lob right wing Gabriel. He's got one on one if he wants it. He'll pass it off to Turner. Three pointers no good. Whitlock gets the rebound. Keltner wants to push left wing. He looks in the corner. Little crossover behind the back. Pass in the corner to Bott. Sutton's trying to post up. He gets the ball in the post. Backs in. Couple dribbles. Tries to make a post move, but it's poked loose from Lewis. Lewis got the steal. Another turnover for Mack. Gabriel wants to drive. Gets a screen up top. Nice pick and roll. They go to Moore down low. Blocked away by Sutton, but they call a foul. No doubt on that call. He got all ball. There was all ball on that one, but it must have been the body. Yeah, I think that's what the referee got him for. Looked like a clean block from up here, but Sutton just drew the body on him at the last minute. And Moore's going to go to the line for two shots. And that was kind of a mismatch down underneath. Not that Moore is that much bigger height-wise than Sutton, as Sutton's going to come out of the game now. But he's a lot thicker. Then Sutton is down on that block and is able to take more advantage. That was Sutton's first foul. Cash Hubble checks in the game for him. Team's second foul as Moore connects on both those free throws. 45-36. to 36, Back to a nine-point lead for Spalding. Still plenty of time left in this game. Hubble gets it at the left block. He'll bring it back out. Sets up the offense. Trying to pass it off and he does to Bott. Bott passes it off to Williams. Calls a play at the top of the key. Man-to-man -man defense from Spalding. Pass left wing, they go to Bott, trying to post up down low with Hubble, nothing there. Back up top to Williams, he'll hand off to Whitlock, back over to Williams. A little razzle-dazzle between the legs, probably shouldn't have done that because he lost the ball. Went to the ground, jump ball is the call. Coach Creel was over there on the sideline, waving and hollering, trying to get a timeout, but did not get it in time. So jump ball favors McMurray College. But there is four seconds left on the shot clock. Enough time for a play. Kicks in the corner. Williams, head fake, drives the lane. Fadeaway jumper from 15. Clanks off the rim. No good. Lewis with a rebound. Look at him go. Flying down the court. Over to Turner. He's got it at the free throw line. Little stutter step. Drives into the lane. No good. Rebounded by Lewis, but his momentum on that rebound carried him out of bounds. He falls out of bounds. Ball will go to McMurray College. Lewis is really after all the boards right there. He's had five off, uh, excuse me, five defensive rebounds and a couple offensive rebounds as well. Coach Creel is going to take a 30 second break and we'll take it too, back in 30. 15-03 remaining in this ball game. Spalding has the lead 45 to 36 here on the campus of McMurray College. And Ryan, it's been a back and forth game so far this second half. Highlanders came out really hot and then Spalding made a couple stops and things have kind of leveled out. Yeah, that's the key for McMurray, I think. They need to go on a run and not let Spalding come back with a run of their own. Fresh shot clock as Williams pumps a three. That's no good. He's been cold today, Sean. As a fast break coming here for going. He wants to go fast score all the way down the court. Layup is up and good over the hands of Williams. What a move from going as he really had to put that ball high off the glass so that Williams wouldn't block it away. He now has the high score of the game, 20 points. Came in averaging 15 points. He's definitely got over that. Nice look down low from Williams to Bott. Gets the layup to go. Nobody was guarding Bott for some reason. He took advantage of that. 47 to 38. Max still trailing to Spalding. Feel like I've been saying that the whole game because it's true. Three-pointer in the corner from going. It's no good. Rebound goes to Keltner. Thought about driving. Steps back for a three. Good look. Can't get it to go. Max been cold from beyond the arc as the rebound there goes to Gabriel. Lewis wants to push the tempo. Looks down low to going. Head fake. Draws the foul. Beautiful play as Keltner will be charged for the foul. All it took there was a slight pump fake from going. Got his man in the air. And he'll go to the free throw line for two shots. Ryan, one of the best moves in basketball is a ball fake. And getting people to bite on that ball fake. Drawing the foul, you're going up, and now you're going to go to the line for two shots, and going misses the first one. 
couple subs coming in here from McMurray College. There'll be Buleg coming in as well as Willis. And one thing, if you're if you're going, you're definitely going to get respect on a pump bait because what he's been able to do from downtown, he's hitting threes like it's nobody's business. You think he's going to be able to make that layup, so you want to go all out trying to make a big play on that. So his defender has to respect him on that play. And that's how he drew the foul. Second free throw is up and good. That was the second foul of the game for Keltner. Team's third foul. And we've got a traveling violation on Bueling. Third turnover so far in the half for the Highlanders. And you know whose name you haven't called lately? Clayton Whitlock. The Highlanders need to get him involved in the offense. Good call there, Sean. He was the high man at halftime. He had the majority of the points for McMurray College. And he's been absolutely quiet here in the second half. You're exa exactly right. 13 and a half left in the second half. It's a 48 to 38 lead. Back to a 10 point lead from Spalding. Three pointer up from Lewis. Hits off the front of the rim. No good. Whitlock gets the rebound. Still plenty of time left in this ball game. But if you're Mac, you got to start wondering when do you want to start hitting the pressure button? When do you want to start pushing the envelope a little bit? As they try to enter the ball down low to Hubble, it'll be a reach in on Gabriel. He tried to swipe the ball loose from behind. A couple subs going to be coming in here for McMurray College. It will be Snarsky and Long. So a little size coming in here for Long. Whitlock takes a seat on the bench. I don't think he scored here in the second half. Good look down low, off the ball, move, and taking the shot up there is Bulick. It's blocked away, though. Fast break, going wide open, layup up, and it's good. He was cherry-picking there. Right when that ball went up, he sprinted to the other side of the court, and it paid off. Spalding's on a run here. They lead by 12 points, 50 to 38. Bulick with it left wing, looks to go down low, and we've got a kick ball from going. It'll stay McMurray basketball. Ryan Turk and Sean Kelly here to bring you the broadcast from Bill Wall Gymnasium. Max been trailing in this one. Spalding, very good team coming in at two and three. Mac, one and four. Most recently got a victory a couple days ago, their first of the season. Snarsky has it right wing. Gets it back up top to Bulig, who's taken over as the point guard here. Lost the ball. Somehow got it back. Puts up a runner in traffic. That's no good. Got his own rebound and a foul. They'll charge that foul on Turner. He reached in, but that should have been a turnover there, Sean. That should have been a turnover. Mack got really lucky right there. And being able to keep the ball on their own end and trying to come up with two points to stop this run by Spalding. Good look down low to Long. He's got one on one. We'll see if he uses it. Couple power dribbles into the post. Puts up a wild shot and somehow gets it to go. I'm not even sure if he knew where the basket was when he puts that up. Got a friendly roll and gets it to go. 50 to 40, 10 point lead for Spalding. Just over 12 minutes left in the second half. Lewis, little start and stop move. Bad pass and it was almost stolen away by Bulett. One thing about McMurray's guards right now, they're very aggressive in the passing lane, Sean. They're always trying to jump that bad pass from Spalding. I think that's one of the things that Coach is able to pressure a lot and put on the guys is, hey, we need to be aggressive, keep that hand in the passing lane, force turnovers. Up top we go to going, right wing over to Lewis. Lewis looks back up top to Gabriel. You might see some longer possessions here in the end of the second half for Spalding. Good pump bay from going, got his man in the air, drives the lane, puts it up from about five feet out, and gets it to go. He's a good athlete. Very good athlete. Bulig wants to drive, right wing, puts up a wild shot. That's no good. The tip in from Long can go. Long rebound goes to Moore. He throws it deep. Going has to just save it, tries to throw it off Bulig's leg, but it's a wild pass, and McMurray comes up with it. Willis has the ball as he crosses half court, hands off to Bulig. Pass down low as Long gets the ball, puts it in the post, and he got the bucket to go. Might have got away with an elbow as he smacked Moore pretty hard. Moore's holding his nose, but McMurray will take the points. Timeout taken by Mack. They trail 52-42 to 42 with 11 minutes and 22 seconds left in the second half. Back in 30 seconds. It's a 10-point lead for Spalding, 52-42, 11-22 remaining in this ball game. Brent Long hit the layup. Coach Creel called the timeout, a full timeout to be able to talk things over. And I think this is where Coach Creel is really strategizing with the guys in the huddle. 
say, hey, this is where we need to chip back. These are the areas that just need slight improvement for us to be able to come back in this ball game, Ryan. I think this is the make or break point of the game, Sean. You're exactly right. You've got 11 minutes and 22 seconds to come back. Still just a 10-point deficit. You go on a quick run if you're Mac, you're right back in this game. But you can't just keep doing this give and take. You score four points, you let up four straight points. Sometime Max got to make a run and hold off on the defensive side. Ten point lead for Spalding. I think it's a matter of time of when Mac wants to bring the starters back into the game. Willis has it in the corner, gets it back up top to Bueller. He'll get a screen left wing from Sutton, picks up his dribble, nowhere to go, has to pass it off to Long. Long has it right wing, they get into the post, one on one. Up with the layup is Sutton, might have been partially deflected and it's no good. Give the rebound to Leon who also just checked in the game for Spalding. And we've got a foul. Leon got the board, Sutton a little too aggressive after that missed shot, will be called for the foul. That's the fourth team foul on Mack in the game, second of the game for Sutton. Willis comes out for Mack, Guthrie comes back in. Cosby passes it in, dangerous pass, Gabriel has to go after it. He'll drive, pulls up just in front of the free throw line, glances off the front of the rim, no good. That's got to be a foul as Guthrie comes up with a rebound and Gabriel just straight up pushed him from behind. Yeah, you could see Guthrie wasn't too happy right there. He's a good ball handler and somebody that you need in the game right now are ball handlers. Speaking of ball handlers, Colin Keltner coming back into the game. He is really the guy that runs this offense, and he's the one that runs it the best. He's able to set up other guys down on the paint. This is almost a spot where you'd like to see Clayton Whitlock come into the game with Keltner in now. Yeah. And we've got a whistle. Not sure what shot the, clock didn't start on time again, There it is. Again, Once Ryan. again, the shot clock is, if you're just joining us, it was having a lot of problems today trying to get that thing set. Well, I talked about it a few moments ago. When is Coach Grill going to bring his starters back in the game? And slowly he's starting to phase them back in. You've got to make a run. As Williams just got off the bench now, that would be four starters in the game once he gets back into the ball game. Ten and a half minutes left here in the second half. Fake on the pull-up jumper there from Guthrie. Sutton drives the lane, can't get the layup to go. Great hustle there from Long as I thought he saved it and hit it off the hands of Lewis, but they'll say the ball hit out of bounds before Long went for the save. I think the referee pointed to Coach Creel that Long was out of bounds when he made the attempt to go save the basketball and what led to the Highlander take right there. And that, that right there when Sutton went in the lane, that was a great play, but he has to finish on that. I almost would have liked to have seen him pull up from about five feet out instead of taking a well-contested shot like that. Still very young in the season. This is Max's only sixth game of the year, so they've got a lot of learning to do, a lot of figuring out to do. Falls loose on the ground as Gabriel kind of just got it punched loose from him, had to dive after it. It'll stay Spalding basketball. You know what? That's something you don't see a lot in college basketball are jump balls because the balls are controlled a lot better. People know how to take care of the balls. As Guthrie was able to get tied up and draw that jump ball. Looks like we're going to have an injury timeout. Yeah, it might be some blood here as I think they're going to try to get him out of the game here. You have to take a seat if you're bleeding, at least till you get it covered up. And I'm surprised they're, they're letting him stay in the game. Usually you take him immediately out and you have to bring in a substitution, but they're putting a halt to the game for a second and checking him out. I think that's what the near side official is going to tell the other official on the far side near the Spalding bench. He does have to come out of the game. And they'll bring in going. And I don't know why they took all that time to do this. It looks like the, the medic over there. Brian Langan's the athletic trainer. Yeah, he's, got a, he's got a little tissue or some gauze over his head. And actually Gabriel's going to go back into the back and get looked at. So it might be more severe than we thought. He'll take a seat once again going into the ball game. Turner looking to pass it under his own hoop. He'll pass it off to Lewis for Spalding. Spalding still with a 10-point lead. They've had about a 10-point lead now for the past five minutes. Turner with a jump shot from 10. Can't get it. Got his own rebound, but it was punched loose from behind. Guthrie has the loose ball, and it's poked by Turner last. It'll stay McMurray basketball. Thank you for listening to us here on 107.1 The Eagle. A reminder, if you'd like to stream us online, you can do so by visiting weai.com. Wouldn't have been possible without some of our sponsors, including Frontier Communications. More services, more value. Save big with Frontier Communications. Quick jump shot up from Williams is no good. 
It's Guthrie chasing down the offensive rebound. I feel like I've said that a lot today. McMurray coming up with some big offensive rebounds today, Sean. Remember to start off the game, four offensive rebounds just to start off the game. Williams, big three, top of the key. Need it? Got it. Where's that been all day for Mac? They have been struggling from downtown. Yeah, they have, and that's the hot hand that you need to get going from beyond the arc. James Williams, a great three-point shooter. 52 to 45, slowly starting to turn into a game. Bad pass there from Turner, trying to force it when you did not need it. Turner's had two or three turnovers here in this second half alone. You can feel the momentum starting to switch a little bit. This would be a huge bucket for Mack. Guthrie has it right wing. I'd look down low to Whitlock still. Up top, they go to Kellner. He drives, tough look from 10 feet, gets it to go. Mack with five straight points. They've got something going here. They trail by five. Smart timeout taken by Spalding and Coach Kevin Gray. 30-second break. We'll take the break as well. 8.47 left in the second half. Max climbing back. They trail by five points, 52-47. to 47. Highlanders able to come up with seven straight points here. And you know what, Ryan? Momentum's now on Max's side. Spalding had to call that timeout right there to try to slow things down. You have the starters out on the floor for Mac right now. This is where things could change. A couple big possessions here for both teams. Both teams need to get some buckets here to get that momentum back. Exactly right, because right now it's all on McMurray's side and the student section starting to get into it. Gabriel with it up top. He's back into the game, has a huge bandage over his right eye. Going has it right wing. Looks down low to Moore. Man-to-man -man defense right now from Mack. Moore spins in the lane, tries a hook shot. A tough look as great defense from Sutton. He pulls down the rebound. Mack has the basketball. Yeah, good defensive possession right there for Mack. Sutton going straight up, being able to still contest the shot. Here we go, down low to Whitlock. Immediately he's double teamed. He needs to get rid of the basketball. Wide open, three-pointer. Got three, no good. Got a great look there, though. Going wants to push it. Two on two break. Instead, he'll slow it down and dribble into the corner. That's what happens when you have a great first half. You get double teamed, but the thing about that is other players on your team have to take that momentum and step up with big shots there. Guthrie would love that one back. Nice play there as Going splits a double team, leaves it down low for Moore. He's fouled from behind, and he'll take two shots from the line. Well, you want to talk about the, the big-time players for Spalding. The first name on your list has to be Going. Averages 15 points a game. Already has more than that this game, Sean. Been a great job at the, the point guard position, and he's always the first man out on the break. Yeah, he is a high-intensity guy. He has 23 right now, game high right now. Uh, he's been really fantastic. He has four three-pointers. He had 15 at the break, doing a great job. Talk about a guy that had the game high at, at, at the break. Clayton Whitlock, 16 at the break, hasn't scored in the second half which is funny because mac has gone on some of their best runs here while Whitlock has been quiet. First free throw from Moore is no good. That's his first missed free throw from the line tonight. Seven minutes and 45 seconds left in the second half. Turned out to be a pretty good one here at Bill Wall Gymnasium. Second free throw is good. Turner comes in for more. These are the kind of games that Mac can really grow as a team. You've got a lot of new players out there on the court, a lot of freshmen coming in for the first time here at the college level. You can learn some things. A comeback victory can really spark a season here early on. Looking for some big conference wins? This would be a huge one against one of their big rivals. Whitlock has it top of the key. Couple dribbles, drives the lane, gets the bucket to go. He's beating Abrams every time off the dribble in the post. He's got his number today. Tell you what, from Whitlock's freshman year all the way up to his senior year now, huge improvements. He's growing a little bit as well. Does a great job underneath. You could say he's the, the legitimate scoring threat of this team for Mac. Last year he was picked as a preseason All-American. Seven minutes left in the second half. 53 to 49. Mac trails by four. Gabriel drives the lane, gets to the free throw line, pulls it back over to Lewis. Abrams sets a screen. Lewis wants to drive now. Get to the lane. Wild pass. Throws it over to Turner. Ball's loose. Going. Open three. Big shot. No good. Tipped around. Abrams gets the offensive rebound. Spalding will bring it back, and they keep the possession. That was a huge offensive rebound for Spalding. You do not want to give them second chance opportunities. Big play from Sutton. He comes up with a steal. Pass break. Gets it poked loose from behind. Turner gets the steal, but he stepped out of bounds there as he tried to make the save. 
Another big steal from Sutton. That's the second time he's jumped the route and come up with a fast break steal. You talked about it earlier in the game about how the defenders, the guards, have a hand in the passing lane at all times. And it's really starting to pay off. Moore and Cosby both check into the game. Cash Hubble comes in for McMurray. Really curious to see why they're taking out going. He's the big time scoring threat. You need him in the game. I don't expect him to be on the bench long for Spalding. Cash Hubble has it right wing, picks up his dribble, has to get rid of it, gets it over to Keltner. Keltner now playing with some some gauze in his nose. He must have got a, a pop earlier in the game. Sutton with it left wing, couple dribbles, 10 seconds on the shot clock. Backdoor pass, they go over to Whitlock. Now it's a three-pointer from Keltner. He hits it. Max still continuing their offensive run, and they trail by just one point. Gabriel gets the lob into the corner, thought about driving, instead pulls it back. Coach Creel's up. He's clapping, trying to get this crowd into it. This is the best we've seen Mac play today. Five and a half left in the second half. Gabriel, one-on-one, -on -one, up top. He'll pass it off. Turner has no business with the ball. He'll pass it away. Cosby wants to drive. Leaves it over to Moore. Drives from five. Wild look. No good. Got his own rebound, and they keep the possession. Couple offensive rebounds here in the past few possessions for Spalding. Not the time. You can hear the crowd, I'm sure, over the radio dial. They're really getting into this one. Gabriel drives one-on-one, -on -one, kicked in the corner. And we got an offensive foul. It's Guthrie taking the charge on Gabriel. Huge foul there. Mack, a bucket here, would give them their first lead since early in the first half. Early in the first half, the last time they had a lead, it was 5-3 to three in the ball game, so the game was just fresh. That's the first foul of the game on Gabriel. Bad pass there, trying to go to Sutton. He does get the loose ball. One dribble in the lane. Bucket is good. Max got the lead, and Sutton draws the foul. Amazing what can happen in just a few short minutes. Basketball is all about momentum. It's all about momentum, especially when you're playing at home, Ryan. When you have a fan base like Mac does here, what helps out a lot is the fan is the fans are made up of the student section and of parents that come to the games as well because Coach Creel does a great job recruiting local guys. That's very true. 54-53. to 53. Mack looks to take a two-point lead if Sutton can hit this free throw. That was the seventh team foul for Spalding. Free throw is good. Third foul of the game on Moore as he takes his seat. No, he comes back into the game. They switched it up as Turner will come back in the game, as does Going. Those are both for Spalding. How does Spalding respond here after giving up the lead? They led by 10 points just a few minutes ago. Four and a half minutes left in the second half. Lewis has it up top. Bounce pass right wing to going. Backs into the free throw line. Now pulls it back to the three point line. He's looking for a screen. Has to make a move. Eight seconds left on the shot clock. Drives the lane. Draws a foul. They'll say the foul was on the ground. It'll be on Keltner. Well, initially, the official said it was on the ground, but they've changed that now. They'll say it's in the air. Two shots coming up for going. First free throw is good. Not the guy you want to foul. He's the best shooter on the court for Spalding by a long shot. It's been quiet for a little bit, but now has 24. Free throw here would tie things up. In and around the rim. Gets it to go. We're tied up at 55 to 55. 427 left in the second half. What a second half we've seen from McMurray College. They break the full court pressure. Sutton has it as he crosses half court. He'll take his time. He hit the last bucket for Mack on a three-point play. Right wing for Keltner. He dribbles in the corner. He's got problems. Gets it off to Cash Hubble. Cash Hubble wants to drive into the corner. Wild pass. It's tipped loose, stolen away. It's a turnover. Going. We'll take it across half court. Slows it down. And Spalding wants to run their offense. Once again, they don't want to run fast break. From what we've seen today, when they work it in the half court set, that's where they have the most success. On the other hand, Matt, they want to go up and down, up and down. Use their speed to an advantage. Going. Beats his man off the drive. Can't get the layup to go, though. And Sutton gets the rebound. 
Guthrie drives left wing. He'll cross over, middle of the lane, kicked in the corner. Three-pointer for the lead. Got it. It's Keltner. He's hot. He's got two three-pointers this second half. 58 to 55. Mack retakes the lead. 3.20 left here on the second half. Once again, how does Spalding respond? Last time they were in this situation, Goving drew a foul, went to the free throw line for two shots. Lewis, pass off the going, bad pass, ball's loose. Sutton almost came up with a steal, but Gabriel's there to track it down. Three minutes left in this one. Gabriel, drive, nice move into the paint. He might have got away with the travel. No, he did not. Late whistle comes in, he took an extra step. Some call it a Euro step, I call it a travel. That's exactly what the official called there. Timeout is taken on the court, it looks like, by McMurray College. And we will take one as well. Mack has retaken the lead. They're up 58 to 55, just 2.58 left in the second half. Back in 30 seconds. 58, 55, 258 remaining here at Bill Wall Gymnasium. The Franklin native, Colin Keltner, regains the lead for the Highlanders as he knocks down a triple, 58 to 55. The Highlanders were once down to 10 in the second half, 40 to 50, and now they regain the lead. Coach Krill talked about the rotation of the young guys that he likes to use, but these upperclassmen that have been in the game now for a while, Ryan, have really, really come out playing hot and taking control of the game when they need to. It's exactly the point I was going to make. At about the nine minute mark, you saw most of the starters come back into the game. And for the past seven minutes, this game has been completely dominated by McMurray College. Bad pass there from Sutton on the inbound was going to Williams, but it appears Williams slipped just a little bit was enough to create a turnover. So Spalding gets the ball right back. Once again, they trail by three points. Their offense has struggled in this second half. Crossover up top. Gabriel has some room. Kicks in the corner. Open three. Going. Hits it. We're tied. You cannot leave him open once again. He has been deadly from the three-point arc. You know his game. You know what he's going to do. He's taking that shot every time he's had the opportunity. Once again, a tie game. What a second half we've seen here at Bill Wall Gymnasium between McMurray College and Spalding. Quick jumper on the three-pointer from Williams. Not the best shot there as it's no good. Keltner got the rebound, was tiptoeing the sideline there. Official says he stepped out of bounds. So give the ball to Spalding. Which team wants it more? Bad pass. Ball's loose. Sutton with the steal. It was poked loose by Guthrie. And Guthrie is wide open in the corner. Nobody guarding him. But a good defensive pressure there between Gabriel and going to force Williams to back it out. Didn't see Guthrie in the corner. Two minutes left in this one. Williams drives left wing up with a right hand. No good. Tough look and well defended there from going. Give the rebound to Lewis on that last play. And Spalding really needs to slow this tempo down. And they'll call a timeout to talk it over. 30 second break here from the Bill Wall Gymnasium. Ryan Turk. And Sean Kelly here to bring you the broadcast. We're all tied up. 58-58, 1.43 left in the second half. Back at 30 seconds. Back here at Bill Wall Gymnasium, we are tied up at 58 apiece. A minute and 43 seconds remaining in this ball game. Game has now been tied a few times down the stretch. And Ryan, this is the time Coach Gray called the timeout for Spalding, and this is the time where both teams really have to get together defensively and offensively and come together as units, force a couple turnovers and big stops if they want to come away the winner in this ballgame. Well, momentum obviously goes for the first team that scores here late in the second half, just a minute 43 left. You'll probably see some long possessions from both teams, both teams trying to work their offense here to get the best possible shot. Mack's been hot right now, but still, even though Whitlock's had a quiet second half, I think you have to focus on getting him the ball here. He's your best option in that post game. That few times he did get the ball, he came up with two points. Gabriel will drive, and the layup's no good. Moore gets the offensive rebound. He can't get it to go. Well defended by Whitlock as he comes up with a rebound. Honestly, I think Mack kind of caught a break there as Gabriel should have hit that layup. 120 left in the second half. Guthrie has it right wing. Gets a screen from Sutton. He'll look over on the right wing now. Gets it over to Williams. Williams drive. No headband. No problems. He passes it in the post. He loses the ball, and it's a turnover. Lewis comes up with it. There will be a foul. It'll be a reach-in on Guthrie. 
Didn't recognize Williams there as he took off the headband. He's been wearing a headband this entire time. That foul will be the seventh team foul. They'll get Guthrie. That's his fourth foul, Sean. Yeah, right, not, now, right now, you, though, you can't worry about fouls. you got to worry about winning the game. Best players are on the court for both teams. One and one, first free throw. Big one hit there by Lewis. And outside, outside of going, obviously, for Spalding, Lewis has been the most important player on the court today for Spalding. Second free throw is good from Lewis. Timeout's taken there by Spalding. We'll keep it here. 106 left in the second half. What a ball game. If you're just tuning in, you missed a great second half by McMurray College. They trailed by 10 points going in to halftime. Things weren't looking good. All they really were able to register was a couple of free throws late. Their offensive half-court game was sluggish to say the least. But they jump out early in the second half, get a couple quick points, get some momentum going when the subs come in. They bring the starters back in at about the nine-point mark. And from there on, it's been all Mac. Yeah, it really has been all Mac. And Clayton Whitlock, you know, he has been playing strong down underneath still, a name that we haven't called a lot. 18 points on the night. Keltner, Colin Keltner, the Franklin native man, coming up big when he needed the threes. Dylan Guthrie playing well as playing well as well. So there's a lot of good guys for Mac that are coming in, stepping in, doing some positive things here. But I tell you what, it's been hard defensively for Mac down on the blocks. Yeah, they've had some problems down low. It's not that the post players today for Spalding have been good because honestly on the offensive side, they haven't. It's the little guards getting in the post, yes. driving the lane. The matchups just haven't seemed to have gone Mac's way today. I will say one thing though about Whitlock. Although he hasn't had a big offensive second half, what he's been able to do is draw in that double team to open up open shots for his teammates. Good point. And definitely Mac has stepped up to the plate in that situation. So Mac trails by two, 60 to 58. One minute left in this second half. Keltner has it for Mac up top. Goes Guthrie left wing. He picks up his dribble. They try to go down low to Whitlock. A bad pass as it's thrown away by Guthrie. Seemed like Whitlock was kind of leaning back on his defender more. And the pass from Guthrie was a little away, and there was no chance for Whitlock to go after that ball. But I think also, though, too, Moore slid a little off of Whitlock in that situation, gave him a little bit of room, and that's what made Whitlock fall as the referees are going to clean up some sweat from Whitlock after he fell down on the ground. Still plenty of time left in this game, 52 seconds. The difference between high school and college, though, the 35-second shot clock, which could be huge here late in the ball game. Passed over to Gabriel. He's got Butterfingers as it went right through his hand, out of bounds. How big is that turnover? Huge turnover, the 11th turnover by Spalding in the second half. Coach Creel calls a full timeout. Spalding has a two-point lead, 60-58. to 58. We are going to keep things here. And, Ryan, it's been an intense second half. If you're Matt, Coach Creel just called a big timeout right there after that turnover. He didn't want things to get out of hand. You draw something up and try to guarantee two points, maybe even three. I was going to say, you're the Matt guy. You've done plenty of Matt games. You know these players probably better than anybody here on the broadcast staff. What do you do if you're Coach Creel? What's the play you're going to draw up here? You've got the ball on your side of the court here. You'll take it out of bounds on the side. What would you draw up with just 51 seconds left in the game, trailing by two? You know, he has been pretty cold tonight. Knocked down one three-pointer, has five points on the night. I think you got to give it to James Williams. He's the one that they could always rely to last year to knock down that big three. He plays to the momentum of the game. He plays to the pace of the game. He steps up when he has to step up. I think that's who you try to get to the ball the ball to right now. And he's going to be inbounding the ball coming out of this timeout. So this might be something where he inbounds the ball, runs across the baseline, goes on the opposite wing to knock down a three. I was going to say some kind of screen is going to be set here to try to free him up. Although Williams has not had a very good offensive game, he is the guy on the court for Mac that can create his own shot. I agree. I think they go to him if they don't go to Whitlock. Instead, they go down low to Guthrie. He's pressured on the double team. They do get it to Whitlock. Brings in the triple team. Weak side. It's Sutton with a layup. No good. But he draws the foul. Two shots coming up. What a read there from Whitlock. Not double teamed. I'm telling you, that man was triple teamed in the post. They were not letting Whitlock beat them in the block. Kind of threw a blind pass behind his back. Sutton with a great read there. That's an excellent IQ play off the ball going after the basketball. 
Big free throws coming in here for Whitlock. Leaves the first one short. Excuse me, Sutton. No good. He'll have one more going, checking back into the game for Spalding. I think that play right there was just one of those things where you know your teammates. They've been playing together now for four years. They know each other really well. Second free from Sutton. You need this one. You got it. Full court pressure coming in. Mack forced a turnover on the last throw in. Moore to throw the ball in. He runs the baseline. He's running out of time. Lobs it up top, gets to Lewis, and Lewis will slow things down. No need to foul here. There's about seven seconds left of the shot clock differential between the game time. You got 35 seconds left in the second half. Mack trails by one point. Going has it right wing. Dribbles it back up top. Gabriel left wing. 15 seconds left on the shot clock. 20 seconds left on game time. Gabriel slows it down, dribbles right wing, looks left wing over to Lewis. Lewis wants a screen, and we've got a traveling. Lewis turned his back, used his other hand to call for help. When he did that, he lost his momentum, fell backwards, and he got called for the traveling. Timeout's taken by Coach Grill. Might as well keep it here. Only 14 seconds left in the game. Thank you for listening to us either on 107.1 The Eagle or if you're streaming online. Big possession here. Might be the biggest possession of the game for Mac. Might be the biggest possession of their season so far. Sean, same thing. Drawn up a play for Williams. Uh, no, because the last time I said that, something went totally opposite. <laughs> so I'm not going to really call on anything right here. I just think this is something where you let your offense run. You try to get a good high percentage shot because you're only down by one. Only 14.7 seconds left. So I think you have to run the clock and try to get the one last shot. They pass into Williams. 12 seconds left. Shot clock's off. Will Williams go one on one? Picks up his dribble. Looks left wing. Whitlock. Seven seconds left. They go to Guthrie. In the lane. Leaves it down low. It's stolen away. And Guthrie will commit the foul. A turnover there. Not sure if Guthrie wanted to put up the shot, wanted to pass it down low. Ball was knocked loose. Regardless, though, regardless, a one and one coming up on the other side. Taking the free throws will be Lewis. 2.7 seconds left on the clock. Even if he hits both these free throws, still a one possession game. Yeah, still a one possession game. And you know what? I don't even think Guthrie really thought he knew what he wanted to do in that situation. As Guthrie just fought out of the game, that was his fifth foul. Cash Hubble is going to check in for the fouled out Dylan Guthrie. One and one. Free throws up. It's good on the first. Ryan, like you mentioned, it'll still be a one possession game if he knocks down both of these. 2.7 seconds left in the clock. 61-59, Spalding with the lead. Second free throws up. No good. Rebound Sutton. You got to go the length of the court. Baseball pass deep. It's no good. McMurray was out of timeouts. They had to go for it on that play. Not a bad idea to miss the shot and force McMurray to kind of throw up a baseball pass. Exactly what they did. It's a tough loss for Mac. You, you fight all the way back into this game. You're trailing by 10 midway through the second half. You eventually tie it up. You take the lead by three in the closing minutes of this game, but Spalding, some scrappy.